Eventually, if Gordon Brown has his way, we'll all be pottering around in cars, yay big. Noddy cars, your mum's shopping trolley, call them what you will, but these economic and affordable mini cars could well be the future for the hard taxed motorist. But would you like to be seen in one? Let's put three of the leading contenders to the street cred tests. With the Chancellor continuing to pile taxes on the price of petrol whilst reducing taxes on the running costs of these small cars, they start to make a great deal of sense. But once you've shelled out your seven or eight thousand pounds, what will they be worth a few years down the line? After three years and 36,000 miles, we think that the Seat Arosa will be worth around 55% of its original cost. It's a high build quality, VW parts, and since you can run it on short change, you'll be getting quite a large lump of your money back at the end of it. Not quite the same for the Fiat Seicento. We think about 40 to 45% after three years. The build quality is not quite as good, and these orange parts and the grey might start to look a bit tatty after three years. Now, traditionally, the Deus don't do well in the second-hand car market. Some people don't feel comfortable that there's no distributor backup. But because we think these cars are going to become increasingly popular in the future, there's going to be a strong niche market, and we do think they'll sell well. And this one, again, about 40 to 45% of your original costs. Next, it's the TARDIS test. These cars are designed to feel bigger on the inside than they look from the outside. But do they? And even if there's plenty of space in the front, what are the implications for legroom and storage space in the back? The Seat Rosa passes the TARDIS test well. There's loads of headroom space up here, and the feeling of space is really helped by the acres of glass. Huge windscreen here, and look at the size of the door windows too, which really gives it a nice, airy, bright feel to it. Now, the driving position's comfortable, but I'm, what, five foot ten, and already the seat is all the way back. So, what must it be like sitting back there? It's not very comfortable, actually. There's nowhere to put my knees. Well, as you'd expect on cars this size, there's hardly any boot space whatsoever. Barely enough to put a couple of heavy shopping bags. But they are all flexible, and the Arosa is no exception, because the back seats flip forward so that you can actually extend the back space if you need to. The Seat Arosa has just about as much interior space as the VW Polo, and this configuration is probably the most practical way of using it. The Seicento also has reasonable head clearance for someone of average stature like myself, and the feeling of light and space here is helped by a small sunroof up here. But it's a bit fussy, and I don't particularly like the way that you open and close it with this twist wheel, which is all a bit fiddly. There are plenty of places to put things, but I think the design is lazy and rather ugly. Look at this great big grey bucket affair. You can throw lots in, but it's all going to slide around. And if we thought that the legroom in the back of the Arosa was small, just take a look at this. What's he talking about? There's loads of space back here. Until you pull the seat down. <laughs> if you're offered a, a ride in the back of one of these, remember that the bus can sometimes be a better alternative. Boot space, small, about the same size as the Arosa, but again, the back seat has the split fold arrangement. So with one half down, well, you can get a tiny passenger in the back and your week shopping. And if you put both sides down, well, it's not a bad little space, actually. The Matiz is slightly narrower than the other two, and yet it still has the feel of a much bigger car. And that, I think, is due to the design of the front. The sloping windscreen means that you can't actually see the front of the bonnet. And there's this huge console area up here with loads of space, which reminds me of an MPV. And looking at the back, well, the seats look larger and more substantial than the others. And there does seem to be a bit more leg room. And look at this. Tiny cars can still have four doors. The Deu Matiz is the winner of our TARDIS test because the back seat feels like a proper one. And although there's not a great deal of legroom, it's better than the others. Now, all three claim to be five-seaters. Look, 
There are three seat belts in the back here, and we think that's rather optimistic. There's no way you get three adults in the back of any of them comfortably. In the back, split fold rear seats, of course, and the boot space. Well, if anything, it's marginally bigger than the others. You just might be able to squeeze that extra carrot into your shopping. Apart from fuel economy, another great benefit of small cars is that you can park them easily. You can squeeze them into spaces that those big cars just have to pass by. So let's put that to the test. This is the Seicento. Reasonable visibility through the mirrors here so that you can see what's actually happening behind you. And this one doesn't have power steering. So that makes it just a little bit heavier to handle. But let me see how I do here between the other two. Good turning circles on all three cars too, and that helps. Ah, easy, no problem at all. The Deo Matiz is the one that really feels like you're driving a much bigger car because there's so much space in here compared with the Fiat. But the fact that it feels like a big car is quite disconcerting because it certainly doesn't drive like a big car. It's only got 800 cc's. It's much more sluggish than the Fiat, so don't think you're going to beat many people off the lights. Very conservative styling here at the front, and I'm also a bit dubious about the gear shifts. I think when you're changing up and down, sometimes you're not sure whether you're in third gear or first, so that's a bit sticky, I think. Oh, and one last thing about the hopelessly underpowered engine. It sounds horrible. What do you think? Listen to this. Engine? Or bicycle dynamo? Of the three, this, the sporty little Fiat Seicento, is the one that most reminds me of driving inside a go-kart. Right down to this small leather-clad steering wheel, which is quite good fun, and the fact that it doesn't have power steering. It has a really good turning circle, this car, but you have to work quite hard with it. Here in the city, it's extremely nippy. Despite the fact that it's only got a, an 1100 engine, you really can streak away from the lights with the quickest of them. Now, I know earlier I was critical of the buckets, these storage areas which are rather grey and boring, but on the other hand, look at the styling of all these funky little knobs and dials. Look at that RPM gauge, it's absolutely gorgeous popping up there. Its Achilles heel, I think, is road noise, even at this speed. 30 miles an hour, you can quite clearly hear the noise of the tyres on the road. And of course, as you get faster onto the open roads, then that noise gets really very loud indeed, and you have to crank up the radio in order to concentrate on it. The Seat Arosa has an unusual piece of styling, which I quite like. You know how picky we all are about the colour of our car, and then we spend most of our time sitting inside it, not noticing what colour it is at all. Well, as you can see, Seat have actually brought a lot of the exterior colour inside. It's unusual, and I think it works really well. Now, this car has the largest engine of the bunch at 1.4, but interestingly, it also has marginally better MPG figures. So, in terms of power and efficiency, I'd say this is the car to go for. And also, because that engine is slightly bigger, it performs best of the three out on the motorway. I drove this up from London last night and uh, 200 miles, I suppose, and although the road noise gets quite high, it was quite a comfortable journey. However, at the end, of course, I got out and just had to shout at everybody because I couldn't hear a thing. Hello! Nice to see you! Sorry I'm a bit deaf! Road noise on the motorway! That sort of thing. The Seat Arosa 1.4 has an overall cost per mile of just 26.9 pence. This comes with power steering and steering adjustment. It has an alarm and an immobiliser. The airbag's an option. Of course it has a radio cassette and the split-fold rear seat. 
the Fiat Seicento Sporting 1100 has an even better cost per mile at just 22 pence. Again, you'll get an alarm immobiliser as standard, alloy wheels, central locking, electric windows, of course, again, there's a radio cassette, and this too has a split-fold rear seat. And the Deu Matiz SE Plus with its 800cc engine. Here, the cost per mile is 23.3 pence. Again, with this one, you get alloy wheels, power steering, central locking. Once again, there's an alarm immobiliser, standard on most cars these days. There's driver's and passenger airbag in the Matiz, electric windows too, radio cassette, and once again, for those space options, it has a split-fold rear seat. Um, I think they're quite nice, but um, they're, they're small. I do prefer larger cars um, from like a family point of view. I mean, getting all the kids in the back and all your stuff, it might be a bit of a squash. And with the price of petrol going up as well, motors are becoming much more expensive, so I think the more people you can entice into the smaller cars, the better it's going to be in general, because the roads are like extremely cluttered. Yeah, it would be an embarrassment to me to drive one because I'm used to uh, a bit bigger car. I don't very much like that one. I think that's that's typically a woman's car, that one. No, I think I'd have to maybe get in one and drive it before I could actually give an honest opinion, but don't look too inspiring at the front, no. These cars are nippy, well-styled, fun, and at a third of the cost of an A-Class, they've got to be well worth looking at. The Seat Arosa, it's comfortable and quick. The Fiat Seicento fantastic manoeuvring abilities and the Deu Matiz with its dual airbags and air conditioning is our winner today. If you're looking to beat those motoring taxes, think small.